It is the beginning of the end for the free free composition. It's not quite out the door yet with the new patch, nope. but a lot of people are moving away from it, and we're slowly getting there. So, you know, it feels like we're taking, we're opening up the box that's labeled old reliable, and we're just taking the free free out for now. It's not in the old reliable anymore after yeah. this patch. With it seems like bunker is slowly creeped in there, but. We'll see how that plays out, especially at the contenders level, instead of relying on what Overwatch League is showing us, because they're not always the same thing. No, I mean, we see over regions like China, they, they just do their own thing anyway, so. They just pick C six DPS and somehow it works. Yeah, they, they love to do it. That, that region itself is just so mechanically skilled, they can get away with it. But it does look like Team Anti. Oh, Young and Beautiful are just going to go outside for the time being. Circumvent a lot of that early um, pick, but immediately, Facility, he's been caught off guard there in space. <laughs> he's uh, going for a little bit of a space walking, Danny. That is a peak you don't want to make ever again. Uh, yeah, he's... Uh regretting that one deeply. And you got knocked around like a ping pong ball. We're just going to slow it down a little bit and uh, try and wait for Young and Beautiful to come in here. They will be trying to contend with them. Ba Baito is off to the side here, but zappi has got D-Mech. Milky Man's going to finish him off. So despite Vizility having an unfortunate uh, ejection into space, Tinkaganti still retain control. Yeah, it was... God, that was, that was scary. It's like playing one of those arcade machines where you just got balls flinging all over the place, and that was just Vizility in that situation. Mm -hmm. God, he, he went, he went uh, probably the f furthest uh, a Brigitte goes from a Reinhardt I've ever seen before. That was pretty incredible. Um, He's gone where no Brigitte has gone <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, a one step for free free and a uh, whole two steps for the entirety of Brigitte's uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. But now Team Giganti, they are holding this high ground for uh, pretty much, this seems to be their, their point of contracts contact with Young and Beautiful a lot of times. They're just making safe here. Vizility's playing as far back as possible. I love how they save the bubble for Crandop as he just emerges into that high ground and is able to avoid a lot of that damage and CC. It's done enough to force Giganti off of their high ground position and onto the point instead as they're looking to try and commit to a more uh, controlled fight now that the stakes are relatively even. Milky Man was pushed into Young and Beautiful, but they weren't able to fully capitalize on that misposition. And you're going to see Davin going for the tracking there on Young Savage to try and punish him for the aggressive positions he's got. Huni is seeing on the transcendence. Jones is about to get that grab. Davin matches him and just beats him over the mark in that race. So things are about to emerge here as Yab look to move over to the point. Yeah, and at the moment, really the main thing here is the fact that you don't see Jonah. You can't see where these gravitons are coming from. Wonderful counter grab. Just going to lock him up there. And a big shatter coming in from Crandop. This is going to knock multiple members down. The charge and the sound barrier coming back in here from Milky Man to try and keep things alive. But yeah, they've got control of the point. They're going to just clean up the remnants of Team Giganti and get moving onto point B. Oh, Crandop dropped a shatter so large that made me sneeze and I've hardly caught any of it. Um, <laughs> But now Team Anti obviously lose that point. They don't use too many ultimates though. They use the Sound Barrier and the Graviton. It does mean that coming to the next point, they, they have some tools to deal with it. And I think the major thing you're probably going to see here is an aggressive defense from Team Anti, popping that rally early here. Baito doesn't have his in pocket. Uh, so I really do think that for Team Anti to hold this, they have to take the initiative. Milky Man's going to press into them. Sound barriers, they emerge like they always try and do. Here's the self destruct will try and split up Young and Beautiful. Milky Man looking to drop a shadow and boom, Crandop as he's already boomed him on point A and get his revenge as the rest of Giganti are moving back over to that corner. They don't want to give up too much ground, but they have to concede some territory here where they use this passive cover to their advantage. Wow. There's that Graviton Surge, keeps them locked off the point. Half of them as the self destruct will come down. Oh. Finds two off on the side, and the rest of Young and Beautiful, they press on. They just have to deal with Little Bo, and they can get uncontested capture. It's all about stalling time here as Zappe will find Jona. The respawns are kind of coming in from Giganti, but they can't touch the payload. Completion coming in for Yab. That's a hugely fast push for Yab there. Uh, impressive versus Team Giganti, and it's a fantastic Graviton in the midst of it all to hold them all close. Uh, and not only that, it held some players on the other side of the wall too, so they weren't getting the Transcendence healing because they were LOSing that ultimate itself because um, he was out of line of sight. Now, major thing for me is that Team Giganti, they, they've got to stop playing this playstyle, which is very predictable where they're going a lot of times. Crandop's um, taking care of it now mm -hmm. with that shadow at the beginning, knew exactly when Milky Man was going to run out the way. And then also here on point B, Jonah knows the exact opportunity he has to go for this big grab where it's almost impossible to eat because he can just launch it into the wall there where it's very difficult for Zappis to get line of sight to actually Diva Matrix that and eat it up. 
Now we're looking for the offense coming out from Team Giganti. Four minute 19. Good time bank here for Yav for uh, sequential rounds if they need to go on to additional ones. Assuming that Giganti can get the completion in here. Young and Beautiful running with that free free defense. And Team Giganti are teasing us potentially here. We're running onto a more DPS flavor, which we have seen a lot of teams run out here, especially on the point A offense. Yeah, for Horizon, I, I think it's very credible to say that, you know what, this team might run out on this composition. There's a huge potential for it, um, particularly with the Genji and the Sombra, that hack and slash, which mm -hmm. can reduce the composition to tatters almost immediately if played correctly. Major things here is I think that you probably can get the scout and I assume they're going to switch back off once they see that Young and Beautiful aren't playing a bunker comp. Mm -hmm. They may potentially try and go for this composition to begin with, but I think versus Young and Beautiful, they have so many ways to deny the DPS here. You're most likely going to see Team Uganti switching off. They're going to try and get their way in and see what they can do with this composition to begin with is Zappe. Looking to try and break through the shields, maybe get a couple of picks here as the point's already been contested. Young Savage hacked up. We'll get that one dink, but no kill to his name just yet. No notch in the rifle barrel as Crandop will take a little bit too much damage on himself and put himself in an unfavorable position. Nice dink wow. there. Zappe takes out Jonas and no protected barriers is the point slowly ticking up, just being contested. Vizility finds Danny on the back line. Huni will answer onto Davin, who was on that Ash, but there's too many members have been lost yet. Now he's in the problem where he has to dodge these rockets out from Vizility. Gets the orb of Discord, but he doesn't have to aim that one. When it comes to the orbs of destruction, it's a little bit harder. Baito's the next victim. Zappe being the one to pull the trigger onto that one. Fast take here with this quad DPS composition. That's really cool. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> that's very. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think. I think the major things to look out for there is the fact that Zuppe, your resident support player, is on the Widowmaker and arguably getting more value than Flipper we saw on the Widowmaker the other day, which is incredible to say the least. Um, and he splits off a lot of the team, young and beautiful, using Vizility um, to basically be in the sky to do that. He now has the barrage available to him, and with Zappis with the EMP, things could get very hairy very quickly. Crandop just okay. in a position by himself. He used the leap, couldn't go anywhere else, and once he's in that corner, just gonna die to the barrage straight away. Zappis will find Huni as well, he goes down with that transcendence, but they've not taken the point fast enough, so he can come back here to use that in the next fight. Baito using the rally, was hacked up afterwards, and denying the healing onto Danny as well. Should be able to give him a kill as Zappis is off to the side. He wants to find Young Savage, and with the help of Zappe, he will do just that. And now he needs to deal with Crandop on the high ground, who's trying to fight against him. It's fast, but it's not conclusive. This is the thing, it's like a staggered fight coming in here. As Jonah will take out Lilbo and shut down the only source of healing. Sorry, Zappe is now on the Ana, that's not quite true, as they will get, be able to get healing out from that individual as Milky Man goes on to the point to try and build more progress. And this sightline from Davin is proving difficult for Young and Beautiful to deal with. They got two long range heroes on the high ground in the form of the Ana, and that's a nano boosted Ash pumping damage into Yona. Easy to kill him, but now he has to deal with Crown Drop coming in and forcing him away. Lil Bo will still find Young Savage. Danny finally ends Davin's reign of terror, and it's a nice deterral from Young and Beautiful. They give up. 33% of that point, though. Yeah, I like the switch off from Young and Beautiful here. They used the, the monkey here on the Winston from Crandop to start contesting these high grounds, making sure that a lot of these members on Team Aganti, like the Ash, aren't getting free damage off. Also, Jonah makes a switch on the McCree, which can deal with the Ash and these immobile targets like Anna very handily, as well as still contesting the Sombra should she come into. There is pressure from the EMP, but Zaphir still has this one online, and no more McCree means it's very easy to get out. He just solo... EMPs. No, he doesn't. He actually finds Danny and Young Savage who came in to try and help Crandop. So he does get value out of that one. I thought he was just trying to punish the main tank by himself. And Danny will shut down that hack attempt. Even goes for the hover hand there on the self-destruct. You can't shut that down once it's out. Unfortunately, Zappis will find a hack on Young Savage. So now he's a little bit more immobile. Forces Danny to go on the offensive to take some of the heat away from him. And Zappis will get that d -mech. Moving on the back end of that, finds one, finds two with those right clicks. He's going to be able to bring in here with that transcendence to the next fight. It's Crime Drop just disrupting the fight with the Primal Rage and another deflection as Young and Beautiful have made sure Giganti will not have a similar or greater time bank than them when it comes round to a potential second round. Yeah, already it's lower here and I think one player in particular is actually making this happen is Huni and he's been doing it during the entire series is that he gets these really good picks during the mid fight which shut down a lot of Team Giganti's pushes so far. 
Team Gun Hero, however, that fight was great for them. It was a lovely slow drawing push. Mm -hmm. And now they have four ultimates to play with here, and Basilis has almost got the rally. That slow and dry push has matured into ultimates for Team Giganti, and they open things up with the Earth Shatter. Follow up with the Graviton Surge. Nice pin for Milky Man. Doesn't matter if you've got a Transcendence, he's just going to burst through it with that collision as they try and force more of a fight, but we talk about it being conclusive as they're getting more progress, but they're not getting fast kills. Is that another? another shatter from Milky Man. That's the conclusive finish we're looking for here. Just need to get more kills. He swings through Huni, who's been a saving grace. Yona went down with the Graviton Surge. Milky Man picks up a double with the Fire Strike. It was looking dire, but Giganti pull it back on the back of their main tank. Yeah, Milky Man sent two shockwaves going during that entire fight. Uh, and then sent them packing with a flaming strike to the back. So great plays from him. And I think majorly something that's happened during that entire fight there, it, it all comes down to that economy game once again, mm -hmm. which you saw in King's Row, is that despite that last fight not looking amazing with only the EMP going off and then losing it, mm -hmm. the fact that they were able to that, get that single pick at the beginning meant that the fight lasted much longer than Young and Beautiful wanted mm -hmm. it to, which let Team Aganti with the rest of their picks make their way up to mm -hmm. ultimates that they desperately needed for the second point. And the major thing is that Young and Beautiful, they f they are forced to use both their support ultimates mm -hmm. and Team Giganti have both coming into the next fight. It gives you so many more options. Support ultimates are arguably some of the most important ultimates and most powerful ultimates mm -hmm. in the game. And now Young and Beautiful will be on defense again. It was Team Giganti with the lower time bank. And Team Giganti, when they went on the offense last time, they only had one support ultimate, and that was Lilbo. So will they run out with the quad DPS composition again? Because it was very successful for them on their first attempt. They definitely got the capture faster than Young and Beautiful did on point A. It was point B in that transition that became a problem for them. Yeah, and point B is always a difficult point to attack because much of the much of the like choke ways are very obvious in which way you're coming from, which gives not only the rest of the team great sightlines, but it gives Huni a great sightline to throw those right clicks in um, and just basically predict pathing from Team Giganti. But it looks like they will be going for this big DPS combo once again, all about making opportunities for Zuppe to find these headshots, all the while Vizility is getting closer and closer to this barrage, which puts a lot of pressure on your main tank and your supports to be getting these ultimates quickly. It puts a timer on everything they do. Yeah. Crammed up very low as Huni's going to be picked up by Danny. You're missing the Zenyatta. That's not good if you're young and beautiful. They've given up a third of the pie already. And they have to leave Reinhardt on the point here as Davin flicks between dealing damage and checking his corners as he's looking to get flanked by young and beautiful. But just pick him off nicely. Facility's up in the sky watching his back as he finds two. He's got Baito and he picked off Danny as well. Fast cap coming in and very few ults on the board even close to it. Vizility will have the barrage, but they're all queuing up to rush inside for the Black Friday sale and change over to their heroes. So they quickly switch all at the same time here. It doesn't give much time for Young and Beautiful to make switches of their own. Obviously, you did see Jonah and Crandop make the switch over to Winston and the McCree. Now they've had to switch back. Cost them a little bit of ultimate charge as well as. And Team Giganti to switch up their style. Come into this one now with Zappis, that EMP. Can they find that single EMP once again that enabled to get so many ultimates? But the charge is a great opener here. The enabler is definitely Milky Man. It's a great descriptive word for him this series and this map in particular. They've kept him alive. As he just finds these picks and gets multiple of them and just able to pick them off nicely. Nice stall out there. Just staggering out the kill there onto Danny as they buy them more time to get some progress on the board. Looking for a faster capture. And Zappis still has that EMP for the counter engage. And it only hits Crandall. That's enough to shut everything down here. As now Davin can just fire this free damage onto the back line. Young Savage getting hacked up. He basically got his shins just removed there. Unable to travel anywhere. It's a nice cleanup for Team Giganti and a well improved push from their first attempt. And a lot of time remaining as well. That's with two minutes, you potentially yep. still have enough time for two extra points to be taken. Um, two minutes, two exactly. So four minutes, 19, just for Team Giganti to hold for two points. And even then, if that's taken, they still have two minutes to take point A if they can hold Young and Beautiful in overtime. Zappis played very well there, very patient with the EMP. As soon as that first pick came out from Milky Man, Milky Man doing a really good job to find these picks because then the EMP becomes an excellent closer mm -hmm. for the round. Um, when Young and Beautiful want to try and come back as a team, that EMP comes out, shuts down any form of pressure they can put on Team Giganti. And as long as Giganti has good target focus, which they did in that moment, as you saw Crandop drop immediately, like mm -hmm. you said, um, things are pretty much a breeze from there. They solo EMP'd him. I yeah. don't know what you want from the man. Yeah. 
he's, uh, he, he tried his best, but in that moment where everything's offline, it's very difficult to do anything. He's also in a mech suit. You'd think that, like, potentially, if you wanted to be really lore-wise, like maybe that armor is not as mobile as we think. Everything just shuts down. It's like power steering in a car. If you yeah. lose that, if you tried, if you try, actually, you're quite young. Have you driven a car without power steering? Uh, I want to say yes, but no. No, you haven't. Okay, no. right. <laughs> Basically, it's uh, you get a nice forearm workout when you do. Yeah, I, I bet you do. Though, I, to be fair, I've got tried to get in the driver's seat one time with my dad's car and tried to move it. I was like, oh, this is pretty difficult. And I thought it'd be was, easy. Was the key switched on? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably why the engine wasn't even turned I on. I was quite young, so I thought it, I thought it was just easy. I thought you just get in and turn the wheel. Woo! But I'll tell you what's not easy. Works. Young and Beautiful's offense is they're trying to move on to Team Giganti on this high ground, and they're going outside again, taking that space walk. And I don't think Vizility's going to fall for the bait like he did on the last attempt. And he's playing on this choke, just trying to meet them as they come through the front door. And no one wants to be the doormat when they emerge. And Young and Beautiful oh, are going to get that mech on their way in as well. A nice, uh, nice welcome gift for them as Team Giganti have to move on to the point to try and contest. Yona was the worst one to get that D-mech as... Milky Man gonna go for that charge, try and lock someone up, get Steamek onto Danny, the hand up has already found Little Bow, so they're missing on Lucio. That could spell disaster for Team Giganti, but got enough players to try and contest and burn more this time back. Shadow off to the side, Milky Man wasn't in position to block it, and Jonah will then find Vizility. Young Savage booping around the head, it just takes a swing and a hammer from Crown Dop to find it all. And they want to get the D-Mech as well. At this point, definitely going over to Young Beautiful. For Team Giganti, it's about how much of the time back can they burn. Christ, uh, Milky Man is charging more than a uh, Hearthstone Warrior in 2018. That's a uh, that's a little bit of a yikes for me because Milky Man, although the the charges have opened up a lot of a lot of fights mm -hmm. for them, so far he's charging in, in situations which really you shouldn't be doing that. And you know, beautiful taking advantage in a big way. Now they've got a massive amount of ults coming to this next fight. Both supportive ultimates online. Lobo nowhere near towards his ultimate. Nice block from Crandop. Yeah, as well as the reposition to just buy time for that to definitely come in here. Sound barrier dropped by Young Savage. There's that Graviton Surge in the exact same placement as last time. This time around, they have the Transcendence to keep Milky Man up. Counter coming out. No barrier for Crandop. He just gets charged away from the Transcendence. Zappis will find Young Savage. The Transcendence was able to keep Crandop alive, who now has a Shatter to commit to this next fight. They're too busy dealing with Yona with that damage. They want to make sure that they're able to keep him themselves up. Huni again finds Milky Man. They're dealing with Baito and Huni just the left alive on the point and trying to clear this one out. Lilbo and Zappe being the ones to get the kill, but they deflect the first push and they will take a time bank advantage after this attempt. Repositioning seems to be a major thing for Young and Beautiful right yeah. now. So as soon as you remove that shield from Crandop and Young Savage dies, mm -hmm. you lose that speed boost and Young and Beautiful kind of left high and dry in the water and Team Aganti with that superior target focus so far, they were to just basically melt targets that they see fit down. Now, Giganti coming to this next fight. They've almost got both supportive ultimates back online, whereas Young and Beautiful nowhere near towards there. So they're more than ready to hold the line here. Holding the hammer. Wants to make it very four-like rather than just the builder down the road. Unfortunately, he's going to have to go for the charge first. There's self-destruct. Danny will find one. Zillity's already gone down. Follows up with a shadow onto the back line. He channels it with a thunder just drops it onto Team Giganti, forcing them away. Should be able to get this capture and force out another attempt. Just have a lesser time back here. Vizility going for the store taxes, easily dismantled with an orb of Discord. Young and beautiful, we're gonna go through to this one again. They will have the lesser time back, which means they go first. Yeah, so they have to set precedent here. Mighty, mighty Crandop in that last fight though. Great charge. Well timed, even though there was only a short space of time between him and Milky Man slamming into the truck back there. Um, so very well played to him, and immediately afterwards, a well placed Earth Shatter to end the fight. Um, in that moment, Team Gigante, I don't, just don't think they repositioned fast enough into a position where they were safe from Crandop. I think they're still reeling from the fact that Milky Man just got absolutely railed in the back line there. Um, but now, young and beautiful. Yeah, they, they're probably going to have two fights at best. They're going to use old reliable for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> Open it back in the box. Bunker. Uh, yeah. Get out of there. Not for another week. <laughs> Stay back. Um, and Giganti, they're not not messing around anymore. They just go straight onto the free free. Most likely going to hold this high ground. Um, major thing they cannot do here is lose that mech from Zapis. Uh, it created a huge opening for Young mm. and Beautiful just to be the deciders of the fight when it starts because now they have advantage where Danny can get into the back line, really cause a lot of pressure there. And Milky Man is forced to turn or Davin's forced to turn to give a projected barrier. 
So Young and Beautiful looking for a quick pick here. It's what they've been looking for the entire game. Team Uganti have got to be much more vigilant. You're going to take the same position. We're expecting Young and Beautiful to take the spacewalk routes and merge like they usually do. I wonder, that, that emergence, that initial fight is the real key indicator here. Like you yeah. said, it was very costly on Zappis to lose that mech and it basically gave it over, albeit uh, very slowly to Young and Beautiful. If they can get a pick like they did on the first attempt to shut it down, maybe we have a charge kill potentially off to the, one of the side walls. But actually going for a reposition here. They've Ooh. tried this two times already. Want to mix it up on the third attempt. Team Gantz are going to get a rude read on it. They're going underneath them. They will drop down here as Milky Man goes for the contest and they're playing around the interior rooms. They've got a lot of passive cover. That's an interesting drop. They, they all actually split up in that moment. I think there was definitely an opportunity for Young Beautiful to move their way in there. The moment, though, Team Ganti, they are leading in ultimate charge yeah. just because of all the faffing around that Young and Beautiful have been doing. There's been a lot far. of faffing. Yeah, for sure. Um, but they're currently holding beneath, so Young and Beautiful, they have the advantage of having that high ground lay, giving Huni a lot of space here. And already that's the pick they were looking for. Basility will do. They might have won in Zappis, and then they follow up on the Milky Man. They're definitely going to get themselves point A here, barring some miracle from Giganti. And Young and Beautiful want to go on to point B, want to have a shot at it, and want to see if they can take this map away from Giganti. And they're going to have a couple of, you know, just shy of a minute to get away with it, I think. Giganti just unable to cushion the aggression mm. from Young and Beautiful so far. A lot of times, as soon as the dive comes out, they know exactly which target they want to go for. Removing Vizility is so huge because Brigitte, she holds so much denial in the whip shot, the shield bash, and more importantly, she can give that massive heal from the armor pack to Milky Man. In that situation, she didn't have it, mm. and there was no time to basically cushion for the next projected barrier to come out from Davin. It all rides on this big Earth Shadow from Milky Man. Davin, sure, you can get the tran the Graviton online, but Huni is ready with the Transcendence. He's taking the aggression to them. Crandop caught off guard as well as Baito. Nice deterrence there from Danny to force him back, but Crandop will still go down. And there's that Graviton surge that pulls in Milky Man. This is the only attempt Young and Beautiful are going to get, so they have to make it work. Otherwise, you could be potentially looking at a draw rather than a win. And a draw will cost them the series. So strut on the point just to buy some more space. Danny will not go down to that Fire Strike because the remake was already in play, but he loses it immediately afterwards. Self-destruct coming in afterwards, but it's not enough to find the kill. Davin will then take out Danny. Wants to find Young Savage with an Orb of Discord on his head. But he's getting a beat down from behind by the enemy team. The Samara for the recommit. Catches Zappis with the slam down from Crandop, but he costs him his life. That's the deterrence. Team Giganti have this one under control. Setting up quite nicely for a draw, which ultimately leads to a Giganti victory. Absolutely does. I mean, that last moment there, though. It really explains a lot about the way the team against you are playing is that immediately they're, start, they're starting to realize after really nine rounds um, <laughs> that really Young and Beautiful's entire process revolves around getting a singular pick. Yes. So as soon as they see that Young and Beautiful identify that they want to take out facility in this fight, um, Milky Man, be it um, just by his positioning or it's a conscious thing, moves mm -hmm. over to the side, um, places himself in a great position to actually get that Earth Shadow down whilst they go for that aggression, shuts it all down, Crandock goes down, and that means there's no shield in the way, which opens it for Davin just to have free pressure yeah. on the rest of the team. Nothing's blocking his mortars, nothing's blocking his left clicks, and at 100 charge, that's terrifying. Uh, and ultimately, that pressure just pushes Young and Beautiful out. But still, they took first point A. Yes. It's very, very much okay for them to hold for two minutes here. They haven't in the past found a solution for the quad DPS from Giganti though. Giganti's point A captures have not been the thing letting them down in this series. In fact, it's uh, on this map in particular. They've been capturing point A extremely fast. So I'm less concerned about Giganti taking point A. I'm more concerned about whether Young and Beautiful can force out the draw or deter that um, transition to point B. I, I think it's very likely we see Giganti take point A here, but they're actually going to mix it up here. Rather than go for that quad DPS composition, they're going to match him on the 3-3. Free -free. So this might throw a spanner in the works for Young and Beautiful or might spell doom for Giganti. Yeah, and I think the major thing for Giganti so far has been the EMPs from Zappis. They yeah. will, what have secured point B so many times. So immediately, oh. I think they assume that Young and Beautiful know that they're going to pull this quad DPS out and think they're going to go for counter strap. When they don't, Team Giganti see this, they immediately switch off. Zap is going to go over to Sombra now, and I like this. This is what they need here. Should they switch back over, though, they've got less time to make it to point B. So, again, this has to be quick. We have a composition that relies on just basically grinding down the enemy team. They've had to really uh, speed up the production line here. Mm. And uh, Zappe, he seems to be the foreman of that workshop. It's all about him getting the picks with the Widowmaker and about his team enabling them with this composition. 
They're trying to get the point on, and Vazility's going to work towards that ultimate. He's the one who's getting the rockets that are just I coming like fresh off the line. He's drawing a lot of attention to himself on the back line. Huni, getting that pick on Vazility. That's something we haven't seen happen in the previous attempt. And that might be the difference maker for Young and Beautiful. But they're still leaving control. They're protecting the corpse as well. Shutting down the revive from Little Bow. That's even big. That's even greater for Young and Beautiful as they're able to shut this down. But Davin will find Crandop. Puts him on the back foot. The time max is burning down all while this is going on. Davin, 31 HP, has to coach gun to safety. Gets the pocket from Little Bow to seal the deal and takes the high ground away. But no one's on the point. You know, Zuppe still looking for targets, but yeah, like you said, no one's really able to hold on to this. Crandot makes the emergency switch over to the Hammond, get back to the point quicker. Here he is already, but Danny's very low. That's the first pick. Maybe this is the opening they need. Obviously, no Diva Matrix here available for the Barrage when it does inevitably come out here. Pick had to use the Valkyrs. Not total loss, because they were obviously going to switch over in the transition. No, Yona's no. going to shut down Vazility. Didn't get one with it. Young Savage has found Davin as well. As Danny's on the back line with the Bunny Blaster. About to get Are remade. Beautiful Milky open Man was able to find a kill and try and bring it back because Lilbo gets the, the resurrection onto Vazility. Milky Man off to the side. EMP only catches Danny. They're getting that big tank off as Jonah moves back onto the point, but he's getting barraged by rockets immediately. But he will still find Vazility as they press forward. Crandop is there. They've got another kill to Milky back. Man. Young and Beautiful might take the map away from Giganti. Of all the opponents to gain one from, this was not the play, Chief. As Young and Beautiful, they're just going to be able to hold back Giganti and take this one and guarantee themselves a map win and keep this series alive. Unbelievable. Versus Team Giganti as well. What a consolation prize it is for Young and Beautiful at the end of the season. Pretty scary now. Even if they do go into trials, you still got to be worried about them going, it's like, well, this team has actually beat out Giganti last the season. They've improved a lot so far. And again, Baito. Being a real boon to the team, I think the major problem came down to the fact that Vazility was maybe a little bit too early on that barrage there. I know he was on a bit of a timer because he was wet. He knew that potentially Danny gets back into Mech right uh, and comes back with the Diva Matrix, but. In that situation, you can wait a little bit longer. They had time there. And instead, they opt to use the EMP early and then the barrage after, uh, which just spells the feat because John is high charge. He's just going to laser you down from the sky. The reverse sweep starts with just a singular <laughs> map win. Young and Beautiful have nailed just that. They've got two more maps to bring it back. We're going to go do a quick break. We're going to come back. You're going to find Junker Town.
didn't expect a young and beautiful map win in the series. And <clears throat> the reverse sweep is technically now possible. It wasn't closed out on uh, Horizon Lunar Colony. We're going to Junkertown next, and Team Giganti probably didn't expect to drop the map either, so they might be a little bit rattled, and when you rattle an animal like Giganti, expect, well, one hell of a whooping to come your way. Yeah, I mean, the little smiley face from Young and Beautiful's logo as Makes well, it even worse. It makes it even worse. It's just facetious, really. It's just like, <laughs> look, we took a map off of you. Okay? It's, like putting the, it's like putting the smile emote at the end of a sentence and yeah. send it to someone. You know what that means. Yeah, you, you know what that means. I mean, we're going to go to Junkertown now. It's a very open map. Um, actually, may even be the advantage of Young and Beautiful here because it just gives even more angles to them and then a lot of positions where they can actually aggress onto Gigante and find these initial picks, which I've been just forcing them into the next mm -hmm. round, the next round. I mean, Young and Beautiful kind of like a, a bit of a zombie right now, just coming back from the dead, just <laughs> a, a real pain in the backside. Um I, w I wouldn't be surprised if Young and Beautiful can actually take this map away from Gigante, considering the way that they've played this uh, this series so far. Um, I think we had a great showing on King's Row. Li Jiang Tower looked a little bit shaky here and there. And we come to Horizon, and every time we think that Gigante going to close it out, they just don't. Uh, and I think this does come down to a little bit of nerves. And you said it earlier, they rattled, although mm. it is a bit of a joke, right? Yeah. Uh, they, they do look rattled. Facility with that barrage at the end, that did not look like the facility that I know. The facility I know would not have dropped that barrage do you, in do you that know, situation. Do you know him personally, do you? <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel, I feel like I do have to watch them for eight weeks. Do you go out so. for ice cream at the weekends? Sometimes. <laughs> We have a, a special place that, yeah. that we go as well. You fly over to the Netherlands to go meet. Yeah, <laughs> man, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's where all my money goes, going to visit <laughs> facility. <laughs> Junkertown, our fourth and potentially final map. Young and Beautiful obviously taking over Horizon, which means that there's a potential for them to force out map number five. They can get a victory on Junkertown here. Unfortunately, if they do get the reverse sweep, the only thing that really plays into them is just pride here. They cannot change the fact that they will finish in eighth place this season, and they cannot change Gigante's third place finish. Yeah, you could, they can spam crab. We beat Gigante on Twitter, but like, I mean... It's pretty BM. Pretty BM at the end of the day. Yeah, so they <laughs> might not want to do that after all. But anyway, Team Gigante, they're going to be starting out on the offense here. Young and beautiful get to decide where they hold them, if they do hold them at all. Um, can make it all the way to point C, though. Uh, Junkertown is one of these maps, if you can take point A handily, because it does go by so quickly a lot of times, point B become very easy. And then if you don't manage your ultimates very correctly in point B, mm -hmm. point C is even snowballable. Uh, and that's when it becomes a, a big issue. So really here, young and beautiful, what they want to do here is basically catch Team Giganti. As long as they can defend this first attack from them, then things could go in their face. Wow, oh my god, okay. It's going to wait outside Very the front aggressive. door. Wouldn't get an aggressive fire strike on there, but Milky Man's going to walk back into the room. He's like, nope, going to go back. I'm okay. <laughs> The emerge is just to get scorched by the fire strikes there. Okay, I'm gonna. It's like when you open the oven, just yeah, to get blasted like, with smoke. I'm gonna step no back from that eyebrows. one. And this time though, it seems like he's gonna try and kick the oven in afterwards and <laughs> just take a little bit of revenge. Uh, Young Aww. Savage will find facility on the high ground. Uh, that first pick, you know what that means if you've been watching the series. And they're able to keep Davin from getting back to the spawn room. <gasps> they shut down Milky Man's charge as well. Yeah, just milking Gigante for old charge. He counter charged him so hard, he flew back about a couple of meters. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh my lord! Yeah. The fire strike just singed half his eyebrows off. He was just—he's had enough at this point. He's like, yeah, the Milky Man's like a ball, uh, a ball bearing inside that suit of armor, just being rattled yeah. around. <laughs> Randop taking a lot of damage from Zupe on the high ground there, and now he has an Earthshire to play with. Again, though, doesn't find anyone with it because so. he misses the big shield, but. Hits like hits mini the shield. small hits the mini shield, yeah. unable to get anything else for that one. Uh, but the payload burnt a lot Ooh. of time here. One minute, ten. Grand up, stunned up. Will be kept alive by his team as Davin's off to the side, trying to find Danny. Just going to laser him down. Can't defend the Matrix. That as Baito will find Milky Man again, push him back into the spawn room. Grand up again onto Facility. They've already burnt a minute of the time bank, and they're looking to breach it potentially to two before this payload even gets onto the first bridge. Now you would have thought they'd back off here. They have no mech. No. But Young and Beautiful don't mind. They're going to go ahead and try and drop this Graviton during this fight. There it is onto them. They could go for a big counter grab here. 
but Milky Man will remove Crandot, but takes Zapis with him. He's gonna move him into the back away from the team that's already been grabbed up right outside their spawn room. Transcendence comes out from Zappe. There's a self destructor sent straight up. Shatter as well should find two. Young Savage and Hooney. This chokehold's finally being broken, but at what cost? Two minutes and a hell of a lot of ults. Yeah, it's, a, it's been a long time. Payload hasn't moved at all. <laughs> at all. Uh, now it's moving now. But it moved four meters. If moved I'm... four meters. Beforehand. Good job. Good job, Giganti. Uh, but now we're going to be moving through point A. And like I said at the beginning, this really does mess it up in terms of snowballing because Young and Young and Beautiful, they have ultimates to work with. They have a Shatter and a Diva self struck You can throw in the Diva self struck try and combo that with the Shatter afterwards. But it looks like Young and Beautiful will be taking the high ground position here. Zapis knocks them off, so well played to him there. We'll give them a bit of an equal footing right now. Young Savage is still on the high ground looking to do something similar and take away that high ground control from Young and Beautiful, from Team Giganti. Sorry if they're trying to contest this one. Shadow through the payload, finds facility, wants to go for the charge, but Clan Drop, who gets caught off guard here with the sound barrier coming in for the re engagement from Team Giganti. 100 energy on Davin, able to laser through everyone else. Will push this onto the home stretch. They have one minute, but I think there's enough time for Young and Beautiful to get a re contest here. Yeah, just one last one. They do try and stagger out Young Savage as much as possible, but. He's best member to go down last because he can just speed back to the point. It will be a staggered defense here. They will have to drop, so they could just decide to give away point A. It doesn't seem too much like Young and Beautiful. Yeah, but they're going to give away point A here. They can't get in there in time. They know it as well. Just get on the high ground and look to contend early when it moves on to point B and try and play around this choke. But three minutes remaining. That, that's a lot of time off the clock there. Usually you'll see teams come into point A with... Five minutes coming into point B. Young and Beautiful, they already have a Transcendence and a Graviton coming online, so they can withstand this next push out of Team Giganti. And the main thing here is how the Gravitons are used. Jonah does like to use his quite early a lot of times. Um, you probably expect this in this fight. Davin pulls the trigger first, though. He is the fastest grab in the West as the self destruct finds two. Wow. Rooney and Baito again being caught out by that one. And Danny just going to be blown away on the backside of the payload. And they're going to push it round and get more progress in in much faster time. They're just stalling out Danny. But the second he touches that payload, he's a dead man. He knows it. Charge away will collide with the wall as well. So they get a nice stagger on their back end of that. It's a really nice stagger because they keep him away from the payload the entire time. So it's not contested mm. whilst they're staggering Danny, which means they might just push it in. And it's only going to take them one fight because they could easily push them off the high ground right here with a well-placed boot. We're going to try and contend them anyway. They drop down onto the payload. Clandop is there and they brought enough time for Danny to come back. But Huni going down very low. Won't even get the transcendence off. And Zappis has finished him. This fight's going to fall apart now. But they commit the Graviton Surge and the Sound Barrier. They think wow. they can win it. Self-Destruct is there to be blocked out. This is a fight that Young and Beautiful do not want to lose. And Team Giganti are forced to use even more ultimates as Lilbo will take out Clandop. And they're trying to blast away everyone else. Zappis gets another bomb. You know, actually ends up killing himself on the Zarya. They're going to push it through into the final section. Three minutes for this point C. I mean, maybe Young and Beautiful got a bit too big for their boots there, using three ultimates after a couple of members went down, thinking they can retake that one. Team Ganti had more than enough tools to actually hold them off for the mm -hmm. time being. They had the better positioning as well as defending that payload as it came through. And now that push there means that Young and Beautiful, they won't have time to hold close on this last point where we do see a lot of teams halted for a long time. Instead, they'll be going straight to the first corner with quite a few ultimates to work with. Specifically, they've got that grab bomb again, which helped them so well on point B at the beginning. There's the grab, the transcendence, the isolating charge. It's again. all being repeated as Zappe finishes off crowned up immediately afterwards, follows up with a big shatter onto the rest of Young and Beautiful. And they do not want to be held at this door. We saw this being such a pivotal moment yesterday in the series where teams found it so difficult to break through just after the gate. And Team Giganti are having none of it. None of it at all. After that point A hold, uh, you, in that situation, you go one of two ways. Either you are so rattled that the la rest of the map becomes difficult, or you are so riled that you will just punish the enemy team over and over. And that seems to be the case here. Perfectly timed projected barriers coming out from Davin. Great teamwork from Milky Man is making this so easy for them. As that self-destruct over the top. No shield two again. Zappis, he always goes for the double with these bombs. And he's being uncontested when he sends them in. Because there's so much pressure being put onto the main shield. And Gigant who just able to walk this one in with a reasonable time bank to boot as well. They're going to be able to force this one out at minimum for a couple more minutes. The Shadow comes in on the back end. The Sound Barrier is there for Giganti and no dent is being made by Yam to the point where they can get away with contesting as they're booted away for the final seconds. Team Giganti complete. They have about 120 in the clock. 
for another attempt. Yeah, a minute and a half remaining here is pretty, pretty darn fantastic for them, considering that they were held for so long on point A, right, at the very beginning. Finishing a time in the bank is fairly good. And it's nice to see that really so far Zappis is not greedy with these bombs. Yeah. He's very, very competent with where he places them, doesn't go for these massive flashy ones. Getting two picks is far more than enough for him mm -hmm. to push the rest of the way in. Um, one thing that I am liking and noticing that Team Ganti are doing is a lot of times ba Baito actually uses his armor pack quite liberally at times mm -hmm. um, to keep the Diva mech up. Really, a lot of times you want to use the Orb of Harmony there, get him up that way. Um, but instead, once these armor packs go out and Crandop takes a little bit of damage, Team Ganti identify that and they move in with a vengeance against Young and Beautiful. A lot of times Crandop falling because of those little misplays in supportive cooldowns. Think of all the archive skins you could buy with all that gold. Too many. Next week, Rising Storm. I want this skin. The Queen. Yeah. Okay. Imagine, imagine uh, well, you, don't want, you don't want a skin, you want the hero. Yeah, but imagine if you had the Brigitte skin for that. Pretty cool. That Not gonna lie, cool. but I'm just excited about the uh, the high, wrecking ball, high wrecking roller, ball. <laughs> high roller wrecking ball coming in here with the sunglasses. He's really like just infusing the essence of the Yota Chad himself. Yeah, and he, he's he's basically a mong. It's, it's yeah, yeah, it's an O to A mong. Let, let's be honest. Pretty much, and yeah. the design team knew that the months in advance <laughs> they had when they started making the skin for the archive. Just make event. a skin for a mong. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah, go for, it. for it. Why not? He doesn't have one already. He doesn't have the Shangdu Hunters <laughs> one. But as they move into this one, Young and Beautiful take the high ground. Team Giganti holding him close, trying to burn through it. Yona's on the tracer, and Baito's on the Sombra. And I don't know where if what Team Giganti know because it's outside the grace period, and Zappe is punished immediately. Ooh. They had no way to react to it. Just in, out. You're dead. All Ready. As Young Savage then takes out Milky Man, he will shut down Yona, but it's the difference in spawn rooms that means this choke is going to be broken so much faster by Young and Beautiful. Yeah, 30 seconds it would seem for uh, Young and Beautiful. What it does cost them, however, is ultimate charge, but yes. because that fight went so quickly over, Davin is only 20% ahead right now, which mm -hmm. is not a lot considering that Jonah was actually on the tracer during that. Baito is going to stay on the Sombra here. The EMP will open it up for point B. And at the moment, he's just harassing them. Yeah, he's going back to the spawn room, but he was just making sure they spent a couple of extra seconds to clear him out. Still Not here. Let him stay there. <laughs> Support's coming in. So that's unfortunate. So the fast pace has been interrupted by something that won't affect the timer. Just no. having a pause. Just As you do. Short break. Oh, just a short interlude between um, Young and Beautiful potentially. This isn't a theater piece. There's not an intermission in between the acts. But is there? It kind, of, kind of is, though. It if you think about is. it as maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the interludes where you all go and try and find some drinks, which are most likely in a plastic cup. Though you guys at home probably have actual cups. Glass. Yeah. Maybe crystal if you're fancy maybe, enough. Maybe, depending, depending how, fa how fancy you are. We're giving you another interlude, though. You can go grab your plastic clutch, your glass, <laughs> your crystal. We're going to do a quick break while the technical issues are resolved. When we come back, we should bring you what should be the conclusion of this series.
So if you just like at blank on Twitter and let everyone know whether you picked plastic, glass, or crystal, I'd be mostly appreciated or greatly appreciative of that as the fight will now continue back into Young and Beautiful versus Team Giganti. Technical issues have been resolved. Baito now sitting on that EMP. Yeah, during that break, he was able to get that last 1% towards his EMP, but Huni currently is sleeping before he takes a lot of damage from that fire strike. A fire, oh, only two people the well, EMP. Yeah, but he shuts down all usage of the shields though, so it does open up a lot of damage here, but it's Milky Man who goes down. Exactly what you want to do. He can't defend himself here. Little boat should follow up nicely afterwards as well. It's Baito with the second kill. Zona following up onto Vizility. They're stalling out as long as they can, but they're working with a greater time bank than what Giganti had. The question is, do Giganti hold this? Um, bit of a weird EMP there. It does the job. I mean, the main thing is there. Are, I would have thought they would have waited for the Earth Shatter, but now that they know that Baito is moving back, they can technically go to contest this, which they are going to do. They touch it just shy of one meter. Pulling up by the brute straps as they drop down onto the floor and try and contest it. Milky Man very close to that Shatter, and it's more scare tactics than anything else. He's like, come on, do come something, on. and they just run you. away as the Transcendence comes back in. The charge misses out. He's still ready for that. Daddy's going to eat up the Graviton Surge. That's one ultimate being committed already. Has to block out the Self-Destruct. Should move immediately for the Shatter, potentially hold onto it even longer because they think they might be able to do it without. Shatter's in, on, finds son. Danny, but now Cranop has to step forward. The DMEC successfully comes in for Team Giganti and it's still slowing everything down for Young and Beautiful. Sound Barrier comes in for the reinitiation, wants to go for the charge kill, isolates himself though. Milky Man is in dire straits right now as Huni will pick him off and the rest of Young and Beautiful will move back to the point to try and contest. There's an isolated member off to the side, but Young and Beautiful aren't going to be faulted by that one. Team Giganti can't capitalize on it and they're trying to stay on the payload to keep this fight alive. Zappis takes down Young Savage, and Davin is the next member on the list for Young and Beautiful. It looks like this is just now clean up as Young and Beautiful who just basically take advantage and control of this point, slowly but surely. But with 55 seconds, that's three minutes removed off the clock. Similar time to what uh, Team Giganti had to contend with there. So now, coming to the next point, Team Giganti, they've got some, they've got a support ultimate online, they've got an Earth Shadow online. I think the major thing is, again, can they hold them early? But Davin already been caught off, and this seems to be a, a recurring theme for Young and Beautiful. It's just isolating members of Team Giganti and punishing them heavily. Young Savage's eyes, they glow red and bright, and he sees a target he can boop out position and cause some mischief for. He just goes in. And there's no stopping him once he gets the ball rolling. And Davin feels the brunt of that one on this second section of Junkertown. Yeah, Young and Beautiful have had Team Yanti several times during this entire series. And now Yona, again, a lovely placement of that Graviton. Just going to be dropped on top of them, won't find anyone. Looking for the counter-attack. Zap is going to send his own bomb way in the back line. Transcendence <laughs> will still catch Honey. That was timed perfectly at the end of the Transcendence. <laughs> they just killed him off. I don't even think Hoonie expected it to end then. And now the rest of them are just in shock as Giganti takes the fight to them and forces them back to the spawn room. Zap is like, he sent the mech up and the mech almost just followed Hoonie. That was 900 IQ. Guy. He did all the calculations in his head. He was like, Transcendence is going to end now. Boom. Dead. Straight on it. Like... God, this guy is 900 IQ right now. Zappis has done some things that I I can't even comprehend. So well played to the guy. He is one of the most tactical divas we have in Contenders Europe at the moment. But Huni has get taken out by Zuppe. So finally Zuppe uh, returning the favor there. Shattered into Milky Man Shield. So won't find any value there. A crowd up should lose his life here as well as many other members of Young and Beautiful. One minute 40 on the time bank. And they're just getting them even further back to the spawn. We want to burn even more time, and they'll be looking to uh, question mark. They'll be looking to try and keep the uh, keep the show rolling, obviously. And we're back, but uh, nice plays from Jung uh, Team Giganti. They uh, were able to deter Young and Beautiful, keep them out of that uh, pay time bank region. Obviously, they're looking to get into point B, gain that extra one minute 30 as they move into the final section of the map. Yeah. And they've been able to deter them multiple times, and they're still keeping them underneath that bridge on the kind of the apex of the turn. Yeah, um, so we'll be getting back in the game shortly to see what happens there. Yeah. Um, I you say shortly. Shortly. But yeah. we know for a fact it's going to be two minutes. So we're going to go for a break. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to the never-ending game. <laughs> We're in Young and Beautiful versus Team Giganti, and getting back one minute left on the clock for Young and Beautiful to push into the second section of Junkertown. And it's Giganti who are holding the high ground with ults in the bag. Yeah, a lot of ults to say the least. Young Savage immediately goes for the aggressive push, and it works out fine. Just taking out Lilbo will deny them that sound barrier. They've already used Zuppe's transcendence. Now damage throwing out the grab. Lock him in place. Buy more time for them. And Lilbo should come back here. Shadow wow. finds a couple of members, and it's going to be a charge in for Milky Man to shut down Huni and Baito. Darwin will lose his life. Yoni will take up Vazility, but ultimately it's Tinga Ganti retaining control with 20 seconds remaining. Young and beautiful are going to really struggle to put a dent into this payload. And with Danny, we'll be missing out on that final fight. Yeah, Danny's not escaping there. He's going to get back into the game at five seconds remaining. Not enough time to get back. So it's going to be a 5v6 to close this mm -hmm. one out. And hardly anything on the side. Crandop has to hit a huge shatter here. If you're going to want to stay in that. And even if that happens, Lilbo will be definitely waiting in the wings to hit him with a sound barrier. Absolutely. He's got that ult. Wasn't able to use it last time. There's that self-destruct. Shadowgo's going to go down. Trading it over. Huge. Danny finds him out. But Danny's also going to take out Vazility with him. So it makes it a 5v5. Now he's back to the fight. As they press into Milky Man. Protected Barrier will avoid all the damage. Crandop goes down low. He's going to throw that Shadow down. Catches Yona. Punishes him through his aggression. As the Transcendence is used aggressively. Knowing that that Graviton Surge will not be joining the fight. Davin presses forward. Looking for Crandop. Going to laser him down. The shield gets broken. He has to hide around the corner. They're going to have to replace it with the Substitute Shield. Huni will find Zappis, takes him out after he's outside of the mech, and Damon's down very so low. low. Lilbo down, young and beautiful. They're turning it back around in control. They're winning out the fight, and they're going to get the payload in motion for one more clash. That is huge. Davin had all the things they needed there. He was high charge. Jonah went down as well as young and beautiful still able to win that fight. After some great use of the Lucio play, all in all, really split the team up a lot of times. The healing coming out, the support from Beito. Beito overall is just insane. And now, Tim Ganti, they have to retreat back to point C unless they want to hold here. And they're going to drop down in. Obviously, they do not want to lose it out here. Shadow comes down. That's Sound massive. Perfectly timed to keep everyone alive. And Huni's going to find Vizility. They got that first pick. And we know how this goes for Young and Beautiful. They're able to take the fight to Team Giganti. They're winning it out blank. They're getting another life in this series as they press through to the final section of Junker Town. That is insane. After we dropped here, it seems like Young and Beautiful have just whacked themselves with a big adrenaline surge right now, and they're just continuing to go. Right, Danny's solo on the point. Where is the rest of Young and Beautiful right now? They're on the high ground. They want to start contesting Team Giganti. They're proactive. And they're going to let this one walk in rather than losing that high ground advantage straight off the bat. But Zappe's already found Huni, so the advantage going over to Team Giganti as they find Yona as well. They're going to take control of the payload, and this is going to be Young and Beautiful scattered to the winds with one minute remaining. They are backing off now. 50 seconds, like you say. Potentially last fight coming up very shortly now, Trid. Zuppe, Lilbo, both have the support of ultimates, and that has been the key to a lot of the victories for Gimp Team Aganti this entire series long. It's having the support of ultimates online. Zuppe and Lilbo being very consistent. The rock foundation for Team Aganti so far, but Young and Beautiful bringing fights back from the brink where they are so close to falling off the cliff. Final fight territory for them as they drop down onto the payload. They've got Davin's Graviton Surge and a self-destruct to work with from Zappis. He's been tactical with them, always finding at least a double when he's been throwing them out on Junker Town. Wants to do that just now. Young Savage jumps in. There's the first self-destruct thrown up by Zappis. Baito's armor pack and rally is there for them. Shatter blocked out. Not going to let Milky Man get in on this fight as they then use the Graviton Surge. Cool minute reactions there with the Transcendence. Go. They launch it away from the fight, but Yoren will still find Vazility and take an edge in this fight for the rest of Young and Beautiful as Zappe will lose his life. Davin answers back onto Huni, but too many members of Team Giganti have gone down here that the payload will certainly get some extra mileage. Once again, Young and Beautiful just clapping back in this game. Davin has a potential here to be stalled out. We are going to go to a quick pause very shortly, but this game is intense despite the mini breaks we're having between it, and we need them to be sure. because It's so intense. It's a high-intensity workout. It you is. have brief intermissions it, of it. It's, it's the hit training we're going through <laughs> right now. We're, we're slitting a heartbeat. Come back down to a, a nice steady 80 <laughs> right now but damn this game is good young and beautiful in it to win it despite mm. there being nothing really to win for mm. them other than the <laughs> game and the pride like you say <laughs> it's, it's incredible it's the only thing you're playing for at this point as well but like i said we're going to have to take a quick technical pause we'll find out more information about what's causing it but young and beautiful are in overtime currently 
They cannot lose another fight if they want to process another chance of Junkertown. And they have to run against the 122, 127 difference that Gigante are indefinitely going to have over them. Because they'll be gifted at one minute. Otherwise, you know, if you just have overtime, it's going to be really hard to get anything done on a second yeah. attempt. Yeah, but... But one thing to consider is Young and Beautiful able to hold Team Ganti back, um, basically putting a dam at about the very minutes. front for about three minutes, mm -hmm. whereas Team Ganti were able to only hold them for about 30 seconds there. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps there's an advantage coming that way, and maybe the time banks don't really mean too much because of the way that Young and Beautiful played this map overall. Um, I think they continue on this streak where they go for these picks and in the middle of the fights, they manage to make their way back into it, see some little hole in the armor of uh, Team Agansi. Perhaps, the, perhaps they can bring it back. Uh, there, there is so much in this map w w which has so many variables here mm -hmm. just because Crandop makes his way back in the fight with so many Earth Shadows. And I certainly know that Crandop and the rest of Young and Beautiful are going to be on the edge of their seats. It's certainly squeaky bum time for them. And <laughs> we're going to have to keep that mobility going for another two minutes as we go for another quick break while we sort out the technical issues. Okay, we're back into the game. Overtime is still in effect. If Young and Beautiful lose out this fight, that's it. The series is over. Giganti walk away with the victory. But now they've gone for an aggressive hold to try and catch some kind of footage or something there to make sure that they can go ahead and get an advantage in this next fight because they have to walk it in without losing a single member. Major advantage here is the Graviton at Young and Beautiful. Young Savage also can lay the sound barrier down at a moment's notice here. And Crandop, you know, it's the eye of the Kaiser right now. He wants to throw down this shatter. Just waiting for the right time to do it. You need to be reliant on everything else that's going on. Might see it open up with a Graviton Surge. That's exactly what happens. Yona pulls it in. Transcenders comes out from Zappi straight away. The self destruct is there. Charge away as Danny finds Milky Man. That's the first pick to push and gain extra meters to it. Shadow will be dropped down. Davin on the back end. Sound Barrier has to come out to keep him up. As Zappis is off to the side, trying to harass them. And the Sound Barrier comes out from Young and Beautiful. The beat gets committed. Hooney's going to have that Transcenders up very shortly. But the respawn.
spawns are coming in for Milky Man to reinforce the rest of the team. Sapphire has lost his mech though, so it's still going in favor of Young and Beautiful for now, but he needs to keep momentum going. Davin is going to use this Graviton Surge on cooldown as Zappe will take out Young Savage, the rest of the group away. The charge that could be it. so off, and now Team Giganti have an edge in this fight. They might be able to close it out. Jonah so very low here, Vizility on the sidelines. Danny loses his mech as well, but Lilbo taking out the fight, but that's it. Danny is just going to be dropped down as well as Huni. Team Giganti put the final nail in the coffin and close out the group stage. We're a 3 1 scoreline. The dragon flies away. The never ending story finally ends. Falcor, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> where have you gone? <laughs> but Team Giganti, they close out the series with a 3 1. Yeah, doing an excellent job taking at least one map and making, by God, Junkertown very difficult for them all, <laughs> all in all. <laughs> they, of course, get that map win on Horizon Lunar Colony. Get a 3-1 scoreline against Team Giganti, and they should be holding their heads high. That was a very solid performance against one of the better performing teams in the season. And, you know, you, we were saying they were playing for pride. I think they earned the pride off Definitely. of that series. Like, more than enough pride come from that one. Like, their pride quarter is met for the week. <laughs> like, they've done an excellent job. We're going to see some highlights now. This was a really nice graviton from Jonah, catching almost everyone, and Danny following up basically fantastically afterwards. Jonah on the flank, <laughs> up on the high ground. But it was a, a very cool game. Um, I think Giganti lost their footing here and there. Mm -hmm. But... This is group stage Giganti. We have yet to see playoff stage Giganti. Yeah, I remember back to the season one, 2018, where they finished middle of the pack in their group and then they went on to go on a miraculous run all the way to finals, just missing out against Hurricane. We are a 4 3 scoreline in the uh, Alvaria Planet, I believe it was, where we had our uh, season one playoffs. It was a fantastic run from them, and they definitely are a different beast when playoffs come in and when it is that last chance saloon, one match to seal the deal. Zappis, so many good bombs on Junkertown, securing multiple kills, and even the 900 IQ one, which caught Huni at the end, the micro fraction at the end of his transcendence as well, was phenomenal. Yeah, and really cool. Also, with the guy you're seeing on your screen right now, which is Baito, who came into the game as a newcomer on Yab, not played at all during the season, been picked up now on Young and Beautiful, playing really, really well, all in all. I think his Brigida play was very good. There were some moments where maybe he threw out his armor pack a little bit early, but uh, protecting his team and creating opportunities with that shield bash and denial. Very, very strong player all in That's all. That's just typical of Young and Beautiful. They're able to find these unknowns, and it's one of the things we will always tout them as an organization. You say organization, they're a ragtag bunch of players, managers, just trying to go down that path to pro, and they're always funneling in players from that tier three, from that division below contenders, and often you find them to be hidden gems. Baito, very early on in his contender's career, for example, uh, great performance.